of the features of today's radio that I think is probably uh, most underutilized by the uh, sport flyer is mixing. Mixing is very useful for the sport flyer and uh, almost a mandatory item for a competitive flyer. Uh, we use it all the time in competition, whether we're flying scale or aerobatics, TOC, F3A, helicopters. Uh, we know and understand mixing. But the sport flyer with a very basic airplane could really make good use, good use of mixing. The uh, uh, idea of mixing generally is to fix a small problem with the airplane or, or a certain characteristic. And all it is, it's mixing one control into another control. So you can move, for example, just rudder and get the elevator to do something as well. For example, here we have rudder and elevator mixed. Now that we know what mixing is, why would you use it? Well, some airplanes, when you roll with aileron, they yaw a little bit to the right. For example, let's say we roll left, they may yaw right. Or if you were to roll right, they yaw left. And some airplanes, this is such a small issue, it's hardly noticeable. Some airplanes, it can be rather dramatic. Um, a Piper Cub, for example, usually, if you roll left, the airplane will still turn, but the tail will hang low through the turn. And that's an uncoordinated turn. A few airplanes, this can be such a bad uh, adverse yaw, you'll roll left, and the airplane will actually turn right. So, what you do is you can mix with the radio, so when you give left aileron, it automatically gives the correct rudder. And this is a very easy thing to do and can really improve your flying and make a coordinated turn much easier. The first thing you should do is get your owner, owner's manual out. It's uh, not always easy to read, but just go to the mixing section and you'll find it's, uh, once you understand what you want to do, reading through the manual is not so painful. Here we have the aileron mixed into the rudder, such as this. There's left aileron, left rudder, right aileron, right rudder. Now, understand what you'll have is aileron is the master and the rudder is the slave. And don't get that backwards. We'll turn it off. It's not active. Now it is active. Now, for illustration purposes here, we have a lot of aileron throw and a lot of mix. In real terms, you'll probably want about 10% mix to start. I should say you'll have the aileron function normally and the amount of uh, mix that you have mixed in around 10% each way. Another thing is to make sure it's going in the right direction because you can easily mix it the opposite way and make matters worse. So in this particular case, we're fixing adverse yaw, left aileron, left rudder, and here we have about 20% right aileron, right rudder. On an airplane such as a Piper Cub, this will make a huge difference in how the airplane flies. The uh, aileron into rudder mix is a fairly basic mix setup. That's pretty fundamental and uh, a lot of airplanes will benefit from that setup. A more advanced uh, mix would be if you're um, doing aerobatics and when you roll an airplane to knife edge, you're flying along like this, and let's say you roll to the right. Now you'll have to use left rudder to hold the airplane to knife edge. Most airplanes will either pitch one way or roll. And this is something you'll have to, to fly uh, to fix that. But we can mix that out. So what you'll have when the airplane is perfectly trimmed out is you simply roll to knife edge, use left rudder, and the airplane will fly continuously nice and straight, making your knife edge much easier to do. Take this a step further, now when you want to do a four-point roll, think how much easier that roll, four-point roll will be without having to fight pitching and rolling. And this is how you can perform precision aerobatics uh, much easier with proper mixing. The first step in mixing and trimming out your airplane for knife edge is to determine which way you want to add the mix. For example, you fly the airplane, you roll left, right rudder mix, most likely most airplanes tend to go down a little bit. Some go up, but you need to note, note that. It's really helpful to have a friend uh, to write it down because it's an easy thing to, to forget. Also you might want to note, okay, it goes down a little bit with right rudder and you roll it the other way and with left rudder it may go down a lot. 
So you know, write this down so you can notate that and you adjust the mix accordingly. The other thing, of course, is when you roll to roll left, right rudder, most airplanes, it's called proverse roll. With right rudder, it'll roll right. But again, some airplanes roll left. So make sure you have this clearly understood before we start actually mixing with the radio. If you've never used mixing before, it's probably a really good idea to be able to turn it on and off in flight. If you've made a mistake or something's not quite right or doesn't feel right to you, you can always revert back to where the airplane was flown before and make a new adjustment or see what was wrong. So uh, put it on on off switch, keep it off, take it up in the air, turn it on, try it, see if you like it, make some notes on if you want to adjust it one way or another and, uh, and trim from there. A couple of more advanced mixes you can do, for example, would be if you have a flapped airplane, when you put the flaps down, you might want some down elevator. Uh, that's used on scale airplanes. Uh, another one on an aerobatic airplane would be mix to rudder, for example, oh, and mix to throttle. Um, most airplanes, they naturally, when you fly, they want to go up. This is what holds the airplane in flight. When you dive an airplane, even a pattern ship, they want to go up a little bit. What you can do is you can have it at low power, you get a little bit of down elevator. That's a fine uh, tune mix, which is very helpful with these competitor flyers. So there's lots of little things you can do to fix minor tendencies to make that flight perfect. Mixing can be used for many other reasons other than aerodynamic. For example, you can mix the throttle with uh, the glow driver. If you have an onboard glow, you don't want that glow driver on all the time. You really need it only when the engine's on idle. So you can, again, mix in that channel. So when your throttle is down to, let's say, a third or less, onboard goes on. You go past a third, the onboard glow uh, driver turns off. Same with smoke. If you're running smoke on your airplane, um, generally you don't want the smoke system working at anything less than half throttle. The reason is the engine could quit, could flood out the engine. So again, you take that channel that you have the smoke on, mix it with throttle, throttle being the master, the uh, smoke being the slave. Anywhere past half throttle or less, the smoke system turns off. Uh, on the Super Cub, for example, uh, this was our flap channel. When we put the flaps down, the lights would automatically go on. We did that, again, with a mixing channel. In fact, we used, we used I think, four mixes on the Super Cub for various functions, uh, flap into elevator trim and so on and so forth. So we can, use we can use mixing for many reasons on an airplane, and it's very helpful to make your flying uh, more precise and more enjoyable. Uh, when it comes to mixing, don't be intimidated. This is really a pretty easy programming thing to do. It's not difficult. Um, you don't have to be a computer geek to do this. I'm not. Read your manual, of course. Follow the screen. Uh, it'll make your airplane fly quite a bit better and make your aerobatic maneuvers much easier to do and a lot more fun.